Welcome to Farringdon. We're going to be in Clerkenwell for this first segment of the shoot. And yes, the intro was all shot on the 56mm f1.2. I might have to spread it out a tad just because the weather last bit in the last video was quite gloomy and I, I want it to be sunny. I want to have a bit of variation. I don't want to make the same thing over and over again. There you go. The sun is coming out. This could be a really good shoot. Now, before I start the shoot, we need to address some things. Some people in the comments start to say that I don't do real street photography. I need to get up straight in people's faces and take photos that way. That way it'll be true street photography. Now let's just put some things into perspective. Street photography in the 1950s, 60s, whatever, is really good. It started the movement and with every movement, we progress and we change. Like with music, like with painting, we all change. It's now 2020. And just to, if in case you didn't know, I'm a man of color and I want to make great artwork. On top of that, I'm Muslim and I want to make great artwork. I don't want to capture people's identity. I don't want to be a walking CCTV. The movement has shifted. Why should I go up in people's faces when I just want to make beautiful artwork and just show the, the environment, the city that I love in a really nice fashion? And if people seem to walk in the frame or I forget to capture some cool interactions without disturbing anyone, because we live in a world now where everything's, you know, anxiety is heightened. People are a bit more alert. Why should I, why should we go backwards when we should be going forwards? What do you think? Although if I ever got in a confrontation and I needed an exit plan, I guess I could always use my Italian. And guys like, oh mate, come over here, you little, you little. Oh, mi dispiace, io non parlo inglese. Mi dispiace, allora, signor, va caga. All right, sorry for the long intro rant, but I felt it was necessary to address those issues. Let's get to the 56 mil F1.2 shoe. I was walking down Farringdon. I found this nice little passageway, nice streak of light right at the end. So the GoPro footage might not give an accurate representation of what I'm looking at, but it'll kind of give you an idea of how far away it was, how you have to kind of look in the distance and create layers for your composition. This shot is purely just a warm up shot and I'm hoping someone will walk through eventually and they finally did. This shot right here just felt really good as a nice warm up. Kind of gave me the understanding that yes, with this lens, it's all about layers. It's all about creating that depth and I'm really happy with how this came out. Moving on towards Clark and Well, I noticed another streak of light and I saw a load of people walking through. However, this one just felt very satisfying. She pops right in the middle of the light between two people, well, three people if you want, and the way she just pops felt feels quite good. It's a good warm up, nothing that I feel ecstatic about, but a good warm up shot. So after that, I turned around and I found a new composition. You won't be able to see the GoPro footage clearly, but there is a few steps, and after those few steps, there's a gentleman just chilling, leaning against the wall, having his lunch break. I thought if I get low, I can get those nice, yellow paint lines on the gravel and get a bit more of a, a bit more depth if you will in my composition and I quite like how this turned out again just getting warmed up just getting a feel for the area now I decided to change areas a bit I didn't want to get too comfortable so I had the camera on my waist walking through trying to see if any kind of composition worked luckily the lens was aimed directly through the bins and it made for quite an interesting composition. I noticed a gentleman in an orange uniform was walking down. I thought this could be something interesting and I had to act fast because there's loads of cars, loads of cabs kind of, kind of turning in. Luckily, the cab went and I was still able to get my composition. The guy was wearing an orange uniform and it just really made for one of those spontaneous street photography moments, which I really like. These shots right here were really difficult. First with a cyclist and someone walking through. It's okay. For me, it's just a filler. It's just a throwaway, but I'm kind of getting used to the area. I'm warming up. I'm trying new things out, trying different angles. This shot right here, it worked beautifully in black and white. And there was some cool expressions going on, some nice dialogue and conversation. You couldn't really see it very well with that Instagram crop, so I changed it to square and you can see it looks a lot more powerful now. The next couple of shots is me really trying to experiment, work with the area, try and find a shot that I'm happy with before I can move on. 
I don't know why, but I was really fixated on this kind of strip of the street right here, Benito's hat. I don't know why I was fixated on it, but I feel that my gut instinct was telling me to really just stick with it. And I know something magical would happen eventually. So sometimes trust your intuition. You'll eventually see that as I'm keep trying and trying and trying, it was one of those spur of the moments and I managed to get one of those shots where I had many, many layers to it, which really made me feel happy. This one right here, you got the black cab, you got the gentleman walking through the spot, which I really wanted. On top of that, you had someone walking right in the foreground with a nice pop of blue on the shoes. So that red and blue, those layers, just everything came together so beautifully. I'm really happy with this. I can now move on. If anyone's interested in doing street photography in London, I highly recommend Clerkenwell and Farringdon. It's not just because I work here, it's purely because it's corporate, but it's got an edge to it. It's kind of hipster. At the same time, it's not a tourist area. It's just people working, it's busy. You kind of get that day-to-day -day kind of mundane grind going on and it makes for some sick photos. So I was walking down the street and I thought with the 56 mil, it would be really cool, especially with those leading yellow lines that if someone was walking a bit closer to me and dead center, it could make a nice symmetrical, pleasing image. I kept trying, but it just didn't work. So, you know, it's part of the game, right? Keep trying, but some things you just have to let go and move on. But the beauty of this game is that you don't give up. And as I got further down, there was a nice puddle with the leading lines and people walking through just to the right moment. This shot right here with the lady walking through just over the puddle, nice symmetry, nice reflection. It just worked really well. This one was the winner for me. This one I'll keep. So if you recall in the first few experimental shots, you can see I'm back at the same area. I saw the nice strip of light, it was still there. If I got low and try and take a picture of this lady just on the phone having a cigarette, it might come out cool. I like the nice yellow lines on the floor, but I stood up and I think the standing up ones work better. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer me getting low on the ground with this shot or do you prefer the one where I'm standing up and getting a nice straight on shot? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, this shot right here is a nice hidden gem. Next to Farringdon Station, you have this tall wall. If you raise your camera up to the left side of the wall, you can see St. Paul's, you can see the train tracks, but it's just not there. The composition is just not as pleasing as I would like it to be. So I tried a test shot, then we moved further down. So this is where it got interesting. There's some nice layers to this. As you can see, we have the different ages of London. You can see the old train tracks, then you see St. Paul's and then you see the nice modern building, the Shard. I don't know, I just always like this composition. I've always liked this shot. I've done it with the 23 back in the day. Now I'm doing it with the 56 and it just compresses everything a lot nicer. It's a shame that I miss the train coming through, but then I do get that nice little airplane on top of the sky, which kind of makes up for that. Now, just on the road to Farringdon Station, you have people rushing home. This is rush hour in London. And I thought this could make a really cool shot. People just rushing back. If I get low, I'm sure I can get some nice perspectives. It's very hard to see in the GoPro, but St. Paul's Cathedral is right at the back, right in the distance. But with a 56 mil, you can bring it forward. You can bring it closer and make it a bit more impactful. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. When I get low, you can create some nice compression. A nice story is being told here. You got the luggage in the foreground, lady walking through, trying to get home, I'm speculating anyway. And you have St. Paul's in the background, just that nice layer. You can see that St. Paul's just kind of pops out better. If you were using a wide angle lens, it probably wouldn't have worked as well. Now we have this guy running through the shot and I'm really liking where this is going. So I kept, I kept at it. I kept trying to get this shot. However, this is one of the first times that I actually got a shot out of focus. The focus was on St. Paul's. I really like the way it kind of looks like a ghost with that cool like motion blur. And having St. Paul's tech sharp, it just kind of really ties it well together. It's got that nice kind of dynamic story, if you will. What I think really makes this shot striking to me is that you have these nice flares going on 
and it's not too powerful. It's not too overwhelming. Anyway, it's time to wrap up, time to head back. I thought I'd get one last shot. Nothing great, but it's a nice shot to just round off the day as I head back to the office. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I feel like I'm only just barely scratching the surface with this lens. This lens is, I don't know. I could shoot with this thing all night. I could just keep shooting all day, all day long. I've made a video with this lens. My most viewed video is actually a video on the 56 millimeter f1.2. So if you wanna see that lens, check it out. I talked about why I use it for street photography and now I'm actually showing you my street photography. So if you wanna kind of link the two together, I think it would work quite nicely, but I think I need to do way, 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 way more videos of this lens. This lens is, it's got many chapters to it. Let's put it that way, it's got many chapters. So yeah, that's the 56 millimeter f1.2 as i said previously this lens has many chapters has many different applications and it gets me really excited i really want to know which photo is your favorite which one speaks to you if you're from london which one kind of like yeah that that represents my city if you're not from london which one is interesting which one kind of tells you a bit more of a story kind of gets you excited anyway Go on my Instagram, photos will be posted there. Make sure you give it a like. If you like what you see on this channel, my journey, me developing my photography skills, hopefully this inspires other people to start getting into photography. It's a nice way to go for a walk, get out there, have fun, get some exercise. Like, comment, share, and bloody subscribe. I will see you in the next video. We've got something juicy planned. Catch you next time. Super quick, before I forget, you can download the raw files link in the description box down below if you made it to the end of this video thank you so much it really means a lot and yeah the raw files are free of charge if you want to donate it helps the channel but it's completely up to you not expected enjoy yourself have fun and i will see you in the bloody next one